Hello and welcome, I'm Raziel and today I want to talk about Space Marine Law. Now if you've been watching this series, it's basically me talking about certain aspects of the law and personally how I'd improve it, person as a writer, you know, how I would do it. Now with Space Marines, they're in kind of its contradictory place. It's kind of weird to talk about without talking in contradictions. And I'm trying not to do that because here's the thing, there's too much Space Marine Law well, at the same time, not enough. I know, it sounds weird, right? Because it is weird. It's kind of strange. We have a thousand chapters in the law. There are, you know, the main, the main found, foundation chapters, the founding chapters, the second founding, the curse founding. There is lots and lots of chapters to choose from. And that's kind of, I think that's, uh, that's a vast amount of law about just this one faction and I think it's kind of cool to be honest with you because you can have so much variety in this so many choice so much and you can go into things like gene flaws such as the blood angels black rage the space wolves and the wolfen or you can go into their history and their past and their you know personal ideologies and their characteristics which make them different and you know such as the space queens and their secretive nature the black templars and their constant ongoing holy crusades and it can go really far but here's the thing i've kind of noticed when you have something this vast in any science fiction setting you kind of end up getting quite jumbled and when you have the 40k timeline introduced as well it kind of makes it even worse it does because space means have been about for ten thousand years they've been you know, they are the mainstay of the 41st millennium and you have the good guys and the bad guys. So if we just focus on the loyalists at the moment and go into chaos in a minute, this is where it kind of gets weird. Now, what we know about the 40k timeline is Horus Heresy, then we have uh, certain as you know, the Scouring, Beast Arises, the Age of Apostasy, certain major wars, and then you have the new you know, Dominion Crusade and the Dominion area with the Primaris. There is a massive gap within that. This is where I say there's not enough. Again, talking about contradictions here, because you have this large space, you know, there are major battles which happen and everything else. You've got the Badab War as well, we can add that, which introduces new chapters, new um, new characters, new, you know, new types of warfare. And then you go to the Dominion side where you have new whole new types of space marine from the original firstborn, such as the Primaris, different and how their armors are different. And we can talk about, you know, how each armor is different, we can talk talk about how each chapter is different. And there's so much very much what technical law, I'll call that. We'll say that's technical. We'll split this up in technical law and narrative law. Okay, so we have lots of information on the technical law. You know, we know how the space means are made. We know how this, why they got split up into their different successors. We know all of this, their planets, their ships, their weapons, again. And, you know, even when you have a two very different space mean chapters who aren't, who don't even work within the administratum of the Astartes, but work under the inquisitorial side, such as the Grey Knights and the Death Watch, yeah, I'm calling the Death Watch a chapter for this video. We, you know, we can discuss all this technical information, but now if we go down to the minutia of the Space Marine chapters themselves and their stories, that's when we don't have enough. Again, this is where it's really weird. We have lots of books on the Ultramarines. We have lots of books on the Dark Angels. We have lots of books on the Space Wolves, Blood Angels. And there's quite a few on the Grey Knights and the Death Watch. And that's basically where most of it ends. We also got a few books on great Crimson Fist and Soul Drinkers. There's a couple of books on the Black Templars. And yeah, if you notice the last few I mentioned, and I mentioned them in that order particularly, is because we have very few books on the Imperial Fists outside of the Horus Heresy. And even within the Horus Heresy, they are few and far between. So you have these major players within the 41st millennium which don't have very much narrative law about them but a lot of technical law like with this with the imperial fist we know 
their prime up. We know their color scheme, we know their battle style, we know what they do, we know what battles they fought, you know, we know why they were exterminated within the Beast of Rises. But that's all technical stuff and that's not narrative. That is not, you know, storytelling of personality of the characters. We don't know the actual way they fought, well, and how they fought, I should say, within these battles that they took place in. Ex ex except the first book of the Beast of Rises. So that's like the only real time when these Imperial Fists have been centre of a book. Yes, they all died apart from one, like, well, like Imperial Fists tend to do. But there's so much little narrative lore about this major, major chapter of Space Marines. The fact that there are more books about the Soul Drinkers than there are the Imperial Fists. And I think there's more books about the Crimson Fists and the Black Templars than the Imperial Fists. Again, this is kind of weird for those for those successes to have more of a spotlight than their original in Legion. And then talking about original Legions, we don't have much on Raven Guard, Iron Hands either. Even the White Scars tend to get passed over. Now, if we're talking about successor chapters, I would say yes, some of these are very popular. Black Templars is a very popular successor chapter. I can't disagree with that. Crimson Fists were on the original 40k Road Trader rulebook. Again, would be a decreed a popular chapter because of their heritage within the artwork and stories of 40k. Imperial Fists never really got that limelight until the Horus Heresy, to be honest with you. Yes, there's lots of Imperial Fists players, but to counter that, there's also a lot of Tau players, so, you know, not everyone has a good taste in an army. So that's the thing. And I do think it's time for Games Workshop not to write a thousand books on each different chapter, one book for each chapter, to sort of level the playing field, but to start stepping away from the chapters that have got a lot of books and start, you know, realigning their focus onto the other chapters, ones who don't get a lot of look. And I'm not talking about character books here either. <laughs> I'm talking about chapter books, things like the, not books like Dante or Mephiston or Shrike, Books like, oh, actually, The Devastation of Bell. You know, that's actually based on the chapter and actually the Legion of the Blood Angels. You know, some of it, we can see how this, how they fit into the story of 40k out of a, instead of a, out of a non, out of a technical level. More of like a narrative level, how they fit in and how they integrate within it and how they work. Again, not with just a, oh, the Imperial Fist, they are, they, they, they fortify and they wear yellow and they like bolt guns and heavy weapons, okay? That is kind of a way that I would look at this. Now with Chaos, we kind of have the exact same thing. Well, I, but again, this kind of highlights the issue with Space Marines. Now, Chaos Space Marines are kind of weird. They don't have chapters per se, they have warbands. And different Legion's warbands are very different from each other. See, something like the Black Fists and the Black Fists, the Black Templars and the Crimson Fists, though are come from the Imperial Fist Legion, aren't Imperial Fists in nature. They are very different from them. However, warbands from like the Death Guard are still Death Guard. Warbands from the Iron Warriors are still Iron Warriors. Alpha Legion, Night Lords. There is only a couple of examples where they completely divided. Some are kind of iffy about working with each other, but still tend to unite when ne when necessary. You know, stuff like the word bearers, they're very much, mm, should we fight together or should we not? And they, it can be contentious, but they still technically, they all still feel themselves part of the same legion. However, uh, the Emperor's Children and World Eaters are completely divided. They will not work together give love for love nor money or carnage or anything else. Probably drugs. Empress children, it's drugs. So this is where we see it again. Like we have let you know this more concentrated view on the legions and how space chaos space means work, and they you can sort of focus on each one. Like the Black Legion has the Black Legion books, Thousand Sons has the Arrowman books, but you can't really write I think Thousand Sons may be the odd one out here because you can't really write a book about mindless automatons who just kind of do exactly what they're told with very little thought. You could do it about the main characters, which is fine. Like, Iron Man has a, his series is fantastic by John French. But, you know, in totalitary, you would not be able to do a book about the Thousand Sons on that level 
because they aren't thinking. We, we won't get any emotion or anything narratively speaking out of it until, unless we can see them interact with a different legion. And we can see this. Like They do interact with others. Uh, one known, not very well known fact, but something I think is interesting. Uh, Feld and Cern sorcerers will sell or lend or rent units out to other legions to help them out. And of course there are other warbands which have turned from the Imperium and on that, you know, four chapters turned from the Imperium and now are Chaos, such as the Crusaders of Dawn. Yeah, technically, via technicality, there are more traitor Imperial Fists than there were traitor Dark Angels. But yeah, Dark Angels are the traitors. <laughs> but that's the thing. Back to my point. With this minutia of limited numbers of, you know, basically you just got the Legions plus a few, they're still concentrating their works on very few. We've had an Angong book, you know, apparently we're getting a Fulgrim book, but most of the stories are about the Iron Warriors, which is great, because they, we need more Iron Warrior books, uh, the Black Legion, and that's about it. There's a Night Lords book as well, old Night Lords as well. So three, three of the Legions post heresy have had a bigger look at then, you know, ones that actually started. Oh, we didn't actually know the uh, word varies had an omnibus as well. Keep forgetting about that one, but because Dark Apostle is pretty good. We're going to read that again, actually. Uh, but again, that was more character driven. But something we, we need to see is how these chapters work narratively rather than technically, and how, you know, their existing actually affects the 40k millennia of universe as a whole. And you know, because there's so much work can be, so much can be done from this. From how they interact with Xenos or, you know, other civilizations who may not be truly committed to the Imperium, but are kind of on the fence, such as some knights who are like, yeah, well, okay, well, you can have our tithe, but we ain't nothing to do with you. We are going to be on our own. Take our money, fine, but and if you need us, we'll you can use us. You know, things like free blades and stuff like that, and how you have all this political nonsense going on, and how each of these chapters would work with it and counter with the chaos which again is pretty cool it's kind of weird with chaos though because these worlds would pay the imperium to fight for them whereas in chaos it's like chaos will pay the worlds to fight for them it's transactional with chaos you know <laughs> but there you go this is just my like my thoughts on how i'd improve it i would like to see more, them to start stepping away from things like the blood uh, from the ultramarines and the blood angels and dark angels and start focusing, dare I say it, on the Imperial Fists, on the Raven God, on the White Scars. You know, have more, see how these work and how they fit within the narrative state of the uh, universe at the moment, rather than just this technical state. How, like, we know how they work, but how do they fit? That's the one. That's what I was meant to say. I could have summed this video up five minutes ago. And how that would make it far more interesting in a far more fleshed out universe. You know, yeah, Ultramarines are the boys, poster boys. I get that. But we do need to see more. Because otherwise you're going to start creating massive plot holes in your lore. Hey, did Rogel Dawn die? Yes, totally, he's dead. And I'll... Oh, anyway. But anyway, that's all I've got to say for today's video. And, you know, that's just the way I think. Because that's all this video is for. You know, start a little bit of a conversation with you guys down there. How would you improve Space Marines yourself? How would you like to see more chapters in the lore? In general, actually. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. A link to Railing Games down below, as always. And there is up to 20% off your order, off your Warhammer, I should say. So that's Railing Games up to 20% off your Warhammer and free delivery off to £20. And find, uh, there's Forbidden Planet for comics, DVDs, manga, etc., etc. And my merchandise t shirts, comics, etc. Everything there. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.